Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargamer.com, here with Ryan and Gaz. Today we're going to talk about Amari from the <laughs> Ravage Star campaign. Can I do Gorkog first? <laughs> oh, it's okay. We are going to jump into the Amari. Mechanical Mayhem, let's start with that, all right? Let's start with that. That's a battle set, that's two armies. That's Veil Touched and Amari that you get in that. So, the first one is Colonel Carbine. Colonel Carbine. Colonel Carbine. Colonel Carbine. Where is that? Because Not every single Amari mini is painted that's represented Not here. Not yet. Not yet, right? There's a lot online. Orc Butt did an amazing Colonel Carbine. He did. Yes, yes, see, you I knew. I think we should show that. Okay. So, you know what? We're going to show that off. Yep. Okay, because I think that's that deserves being shown off because you're saying all the stuff Definitely. about the Amari. You're like, no, Gorkog Amari, look at this. Yeah, okay? look at this. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Look at that, okay? There it is. There there it is. And okay, that's only because Orc Butt did that. That's only because Orc Butt did that, right? So clearly, depending on the paint job, will determine the awesomeness of whatever it is that you're showing off. We'll determine the thumbs up from Ryan. From Ryan, okay? Yeah. Now, in addition to this, what we are gonna do is learn about Colonel Carbine, okay? Because we're, mm. we're learning about the lore and see what it says. Uh, first and foremost though, before we dive into Colonel Carbine, about the Amari in general, okay? You're just judging by their aesthetic, well, here you go. Here's the summary. The dwarves of the Amari system lost their entire civilian population when the vanguard encountered the Gorkhog on Ankar and the Amari king sent his entire military, the engineers of war, to help fight them. No sooner had the engineers of war left, left the system than another group of Gorkhog attacked, slaughtering the king and his people. Engineers of War returned victorious to a dead system. That was 71 years ago, and the members of the Engineers of War were still recovering. They have had little contact with the Vanguard or anyone else outside their system and have been singularly focused with rebuilding their civilization. Okay, now what we learn about the Gorkog is Null, the Horde Master, what does he do? Well, he, he's the general of the Gorkog. He he's, kind of commands the Gorkog with his right hand man, Corvax. Corvax, right? And the Bone Crusher. How many did they slaughter? Billions. They, Let's get that right. Billions. Okay, billions. I said millions on the other video, but it's billions. I already know the stuff you do do talking. And the best thing is, what we found out about that so far, is that the Amari King is dead. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't know. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't that's, know that's, that's the best part, is it? Because their leaders scattered. Wow. Here's the status, though. I'm happier. I don't know about you. The Amari have created a new life on the planet Regstat. More militaristic in nature than before, but civilian life has begun blossoming once again. The Amari are a long-lived and ponderous people, but they are finally ready to seek out answers as to why their people were slaughtered and to avenge their deaths. Okay, I now, mean, they can try. They can try. They can try, yeah. Out, right? They, won't do it. they, they can try and rebuild and offer some sport to the Gorkog, but... Yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what history what says, think. what history tells us is that uh, <laughs> there's much sport to be had there. A lot of sport to be had. Billions. Billions of sport Billions. to be had now. Carbine. So, heavy weapons commander of the King's March, Colonel Kulfrat Carbine, C3 to his men, is only brought in if General Tarkhan deems prisoners and or post-combat research is not necessary. When Carbine is finished with his assignment, the R&D and D is lucky if they can find more than bits of bone in ash. Carbine may be known for his thorough methods of destruction, but he is certainly not careless with his missions or the lives of those that report under him. So that's him. Okay. He sounds pretty ruthless. He sounds. Um, he's good at his job. He's very thorough. He cares I mean, about his dudes and he's good yeah, at his job. That's yeah. really what it is. It's a right? real cry and shame he couldn't do that when they slaughtered billions. But hey, you know, he was not. That was 71 years ago. Team. How old is he? Right? He's quite old. Yeah. 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 Touching yeah. 100 and something. Yeah. yeah. How long do but Amari he, dwarves live? He looks pretty cool. He does, he look, does cool. look pretty cool. I will give you that. The model looks nice. The model does look nice. It does look nice. It's fine. Okay. Ooh, Ego Squad. That's the Ego Squad. Ego Squad. <laughs> How fitting in the Amari Battle Force that there is an Ego Squad. There's an Ego Squad, right? And here's the thing. They're, they're Ego Squad, but they're called Pathfinders. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here's a Pathfinder. I'll show you a Pathfinder. Show this us is a Pathfinder. Pathfinder right here. Look at that, okay? That's a Pathfinder. That looks pretty cool. Okay, Glacial Geek. This is this is Phil. Yeah, I was about to okay. say, is that this, Phil? That, of course, it's, yeah. Phil, I, it's Phil. He looks. Okay. Like, he does look pretty cool. He looks like he's ready. He looks like he's ready to ready lead to go. the way. What do Pathfinders do? I mean, yeah. do they just find paths? Or? <laughs> so, though most of the engineers of war has moved to focus light weapons, the Pathfinders have held firm at keeping their projectile-based armaments. 
outdated, but at the forefront of putting as many bullets into the other guy as you can, the Pathfinder's automatic weapons provide an immense amount of suppression fire for infantry and others to be able to move more freely around the battlefield. No matter how dire the situation, the engineers of war can always rely on the Pathfinders to be able to shoot a way out of it. They're really good at shooting stuff. Cool. Clearing a path. They yeah. find the path. They find the path. They find the path for the others, and then when the other guys are kind of like moving forwards, they just give fire support. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's right. Hence, they keep these huge, rather excessive looking Gatling cannons. Uh -huh. That look really cool. It's really cool, yeah. right? Okay, now the Pathfinders are led by Colonel Carbine. Okay, so this is another Ford Strike Pathfinder. Like, look at that, okay? Very armored. <laughs> Very yeah. armored. Very armored. Multiple Sweet, different right? guns, Very stabilizers nice. in the backpack. Okay. It looks like you put, a, put on a bunch of winter gear and then turned it into armor. He looks really yes. cool. He yeah. looks like a marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> he just doesn't like it. I know, but it, is, is... it is a really good aesthetic. I do it's, like I, it. I love how you're... Okay, you know what? All right. Yeah. Uh, Okay, show me a cool Gorkog model. <laughs> okay, the Razor Rim. Okay, hold here. Let me get that. Sure, mate. Here we go. The Razor Rim. That's my it's favorite too. Arguably the best Ravage Star miniature. <laughs> Arguably. Arguably. Hey, I'm not arguing with I'm that. I'm not arguing with that either. If, if, for now. For, na for now, until something cooler comes out. Yeah. yeah. We have the Negotiators. Now, that's actually the name of the unit, the actual unit like the name of the squad. The unit itself is a diplomat. So this is actually a diplomat, and check this out. Younger sibling to the ambassador, which is this big guy, we'll talk about him we'll after. We'll talk about the big guy. The IWD diplomat is no slouch when it comes to firepower. Both are piloted mechs, and something of a rivalry has developed between diplomat pilots and the much fewer ambassador pilots. While the diplomat may not have a massive hammer, it supports multiple arm attachments, allowing the mech's armaments to be catered to the current mission objectives. So it sounds like they're pretty flexible. The diplomat is also faster than its older brother, able to achieve a steady trot without a loss of stability. So it's accurate, moves quickly, has a lot of firepower, and there's a bit of a competition. It's like, hey, we, we pilots are better than the ambassador pilots. Which, you know, again, I can get, yeah, I like the aesthetic of that. You know, they, they move forward in advance with the infantry and can lay down medium to heavy fire, depending on what they're outfitted with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. That's, right. a, that's a military fighting force. I do like, and a good mech. Who doesn't like a mech? Who doesn't like a mech? These are Death Riders. And who painted this? I painted this. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly, right? And that's why we're going to talk about it, because we need to celebrate the fact. Because Ryan, got to say, man, Ravage Star is a fun game. It's going to be a lot of fun game for many people. But you know who I want to have fun with most when I play this game? Who? Who do you think? Me? I think you know the answer to the question. Who? Yes, the answer is you. Okay? It's you, it's Morgan, it's Dana, it's family. Okay? Family. If you don't have family, and family is who you spend your time with, right? True. So if it's not, a, it's not someone with their kids, it's someone with their friends, right? That's what it is. You're talking to me. I'm talking to you. Yeah, no, 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 You're no, absolutely no. The, right. the bloke behind you it's, is who I'm talking about. It's all about spending quality time with family and friends. That's right. Okay, so that Death Rider, fantastic paint job. I love it. And you know what? This is this is Ryan's best mini. I know. He's painted. Like, look I still that. don't believe you painted that, Ryan. I don't. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. It's very neat. Very neat. Neat me. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous. <laughs> I'm just jealous. Just made jealous. Yeah, Seriously, jealous. I'm just jealous because I can't yeah. paint as neat as that. Rub it in your face. You can rub it in my face. Yeah. Gaz is jazzing. I'm jazzing right now. There's lightning troopers, all right? Let's take a look at these ones. These lightning are li troopers? Yeah, these are lightning troopers, okay? Check it out. The Amari actually look very, what's the word I'm looking for? Strong. Yeah, totally. they do. They've yes. got like a very physical presence about them. I mean, yes, they're kind of short and, you know, displayed as dwarves, which is fine, but mm -hmm. they're very, very muscly. Like, they're all, uh, they've all been to the gym recently. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's no lazy Imari, by all accounts. There's no lazy Imari. No, there's right. no lazy Imari. They all seem very uh, physically tuned. Imari Lightning Trooper. Yes. Okay. Wielding a highly advanced form of the standard issue focused light rifle, Lightning mm -hmm. Troopers pack an incredible amount of destructive power in a dwarven-sized package. It's funny how you were just saying that, right? They're like stubby yet Death stout. Right. Yeah. Oh, originally developed as a way to eradicate hostile vermin on Latigo, Lightning Trooper's rifle has proven immensely useful against light armored targets across short distances. 
Okay, so watch out if you're a light armored target and you're on the other side of this lightning trooper. Okay, like yes. some of the grudge bugs. They are jokingly called the chefs of the engineers of war and nicknamed many troopers have embraced with a let's cook them or let them cook <laughs> let mindset cook. that has only intensified in recent years. Okay, so let's just let them cook. That's right. cool. I do. There's a lot of like healthy rivalry and competition in regards to the Amari, from what I can see. You know, like yes. we can do better than you. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. It's a shame none of them could protect their population. I'm just saying that. But yeah, cool. Dude, too soon. Come I know, on. It's too 71 soon. years. 71 years. Man. That's, that's yeah, too soon. That's I know. too soon. It's too soon, right? Right. I know. Wait, they've only been a civilization for like six. No, they've been like for thousands of years. Oh, they were a civilization. <laughs> hey, they're rebuilding it, man. Yeah, they're rebuilding sure. their civilization. Yeah, they're rebuilding it. Okay. They were wiped out by Gorkog, who was yeah. under like the control Obviously. of Nivir, the god of wrath. So what if the Amari had a god on their side doing stuff for them, then making them do stuff? It probably would have turned out different, but here we are. Probably would have, right? Here we are. They aren't. We're going to dig at the Amari every chance we get, not. you know. Even though they are very, very are just better. <laughs> technologically advanced. Stronger. Better guns, mm -hmm. better weaponry, mm -hmm. and they do seem like they're up for a, a decent fight, but... It's just words right now, you know, proof in the pudding, history dictates and all that. That's the mechanical mayhem battle pack. You get a good amount of minis in there. You do. And you get a good amount of Amari minis, okay? So like if you... A good mixture of minis as well. Mechs and infantry. Mechs, infantry. Yeah. So it looks like that force. That kind of like, it's like a mobile elitist gun group. And it helps the, what I can imagine, we haven't been onto it yet, the mainline infantry. If I was to employ this, these troops, I would have a main gun line in front of me and then I'd have these on the flanks maybe, mm -hmm. kind of just causing, being a nuisance and causing attrition mm -hmm. um, to the enemy as they advance in. It's kind of like, you know, a trap the enemy within. So yeah, it seems like a very, very elite um, force multiplier. Yes. For better wording. Yeah. To, yeah. The, to the battle line, which I presume we're gonna come onto the battle line now. Uh, Hazard a guess. We'll do the uh, battle set, okay? Okay. Yeah, the battle pack of the Siege of Ankar. So that's what it is. And the first thing you get is this dude right here. That is Colonel Boberon Trax. Right, so Boberon Trax. He does look pretty cool though, doesn't he, Roy? Look All at right. the size of the hammer. He's the leader <laughs> of the engineers of Engineer of War's Forge Strike Division. Colonel Boberon Trax prefers combat to strategy. It's interesting you were just mentioning strategy. And so you were right. Now it's the reverse. Right? And this guy just throws it to the wind. He throws his hammer to the wind, right? Okay. So perfectly happy to be instrument of another more patient commanders. Despite his gruff aloofness, he is a valiant defender of his people and an inspiration to the Amari soldiers he leads on the battlefield. Colonel Trax earned distinction for leading the final assault against the Gorkog on Ankar, securing the Vanguard survivors and extracting them to safety. So, oh, so he helped the Vanguard. He did help the Even Vanguard. Even though when the Vanguard apparently abandoned the Amari. That's right. That's, I mean, that's what happens, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he kind of, oh, careful, right? So he yeah, kind of leads from the front. Very, very up close and personal, which you can kind of tell from the model, really. He's like he's striding forwards like a pistol and a hammer. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like really so much range on no. him. He's very up close and personal. Exactly. Really not. cool looking model at the helm. It's cool, right? It like that cool. hammer's yeah. awesome. The hammer's awesome, the helm, I like it. And once again, props to Siege Studios for painting up these minis. And look at this one, okay? This is a Shield Warden. Hold this mini right there. Yeah, you hold that one. Okay, you hold it, and look at this. You wanna know something about a Shield Warden? Shield Warden of the Ford Strike Division are some of the most capable and deadly soldiers in the entire Engineers of War. Selected from the Academy based on their STT scores and melee combat proficiencies, STT, we'll find out what that means. Okay, yeah. The rank and file Ford Strike soldiers are a cut above the rest. When General Tarkon believes a mission is dangerous, vital or both, he knows that the Forge Strike Division will not only lead that mission, but ensure its success. Okay, those are the Shield Wardens. And by the way, that goes the same for the Shield Wardens or Shield Maidens. So we'll find the Shield Maidens later. They have the exact same, they're part of the same everything. Same strike force. Yep, the same strike yeah, force. Yeah, these kind of scenes be like the, uh, you know, the elite. Oh the yeah. The real elite. They yeah. are the real elite. Now let's look at this dude. Okay. okay. Happens to be a painting competition uh, hosted <laughs> by My Mini Factory. So you can actually get a free download of the STL of this one. Okay. Same dude. Yeah. So I can get this from My Mini Factory painted up for a painting competition. So you would need to download the STL for free. You can also uh, buy okay. a physical one. 
right? But that one, if you want this STL download for free, you can, it's available. Right now, until November 30th. And then, then it's not. Yeah. Hold up, better hurry up. We yeah, already have, hurry. we have more than a month? Yep. Now here's the Amari infantry, okay? So the brave soldiers of the Amari are trained for both terrestrial and space combat. So they can Whoa. fit, they can like fight on the planet or fight in space. Whoa. Okay, that's cool, okay. Mm -hmm. Now they're able to react quickly to changing battlefield conditions with resilient precision. So they're really Whoa. good and accurate with their shots. Most are armed with IAA focused so light basically rifles. Basically, they're like Hawkeye with the guns. Exactly. Yeah, well, now Hawkeye's a superhero, though. Even though he's not, is he's he? a hero who is a uh, super. Okay. <laughs> oh, so it allows them to shoot short, thin bursts of energy with minimal overheating, right? So the Amari infantry are the backbone of the Amari army, the engineers of war. They're the backbone. So wow. most of these guys, ready and willing to be summoned at a moment's notice to fight on the other side of the galaxy without hesitation or complaint. It's it's like okay, where am I needed? Okay, done. I'm I'm there. Oh no. I'm there. Yeah. <coughs> they're the backbone of the army. Okay. okay. The Amari infantry. Pretty cool, I would say, right? Yeah, they're pretty yeah. awesome looking line troops actually. Awesome. Yeah. Mm. Not too bad. I like the yeah. armor. Do you like the helmets? Oh yeah, the helmets. And the beards coming through as well. I do you like that? The helmets as well. are like. Ancient helmets were yeah. like, like yeah. Roman helmets where it like went down to your nose. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, your yeah. There's a there's the aesthetic there that's a similar. Yeah, to that's that. pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh -huh. So now, this year, They're awesome. This is the Mech Master. The Steamari Mech Master. The Mech Master. Okay, I so like yeah, like the underneath, like this is the um, and the little satellite dish, the little yeah. wrist kind of display. Yeah, that's is a weird that thing. Like a gadget on his wrist. Yeah. Yeah, that is. So the Amari War Mech Division commands some of the most powerful weapons the engineer of war has to offer. So many of which are helmed by the Mech Masters. This is the Mech oh, Master. Mech Master. So Mech Masters serve as the jack of all trades, field mm -hmm. operatives, controlling pilotless mechs. Okay, so if there's one of these, Ooh. there's a scout right next to it. There's no pilot in there. It actually controls that. Ah. Whoa. That's pretty cool, oh, right? It's like wrist thing. Exactly. Yeah. So here's the here's the pilotless mech. It's that like the mech playing master. with like an RC toy or something. Like an RC toy. But like yeah. big. But big. And like bigger than you. Just imagine a mech this big and you're controlling it with a thing on your wrist. That's the mech master. Okay. Uh -huh. It's pretty sweet, right? I wonder how tall the Amari are. Probably like a kid size like me. Probably your size. And these are pilotless. Yeah, yeah they're like pilotless. That. This is the PL-16 right here. Okay, so they also do communications, technical, and logistical support to their fellow officers. So there's really good, technically speaking, they're the mech masters, right? They're good mechanized. They're, they're mechanics, right? It's a good supporting unit. Supporting you know, unit. Providing communications to everybody. Mm -hmm. Kind of that link, yep. the anchor to the army in a way. Yeah. Because without the mech master, no one could talk to each other. That's right, and get this, okay? Sometimes the difference between victory and defeat can be determined by whether a mech master has packed the right toys before a drop. Okay, so you gotta bring the right toys if you wanna play the correct game and win at the game, right? That's, That's true. the mech master's job. Okay, pretty sweet. Uh, I wonder where the mech master was when the whole entire civilization got wiped out. <laughs> yeah, they were really really Clearly didn't have the right it. toys for that, did he? Yeah, but what do you do when there's like how many millions of uh, Gorkog? Numbers, numbers mean nothing. Numbers mean nothing. Nothing. Right? No. Nope. So the PL-16 Scout Mech is the IWD's most prolific creation. IWD, that would be the Mario War Division. In my like that. IWD, that's a, that, do you know what? I, I've heard that a few times now, and yeah. that's, a, that's a solid, uh, solid guess. Solid that. guess. Yeah, solid right? guess. And used throughout both terrestrial and space arrangements, okay, engagements, so that's, you know, it's what that is. Mm -hmm. Although usually controlled by an experienced mech master, the PL-16 is capable of accepting verbal commands carrying out simple tasks such as guard duty and short range exploration. Do you know what it reminds me of? What's that? Real steel. Yeah. When he's telling the robot how to fight, he's like, jab right uppercut. Yes. Yeah. So movie? he could do that. We, well, that's a movie with Oh, it's Hugh a movie, Jackman. but yeah. It's yeah, a good movie. It's like he like controls a mech beside him, basically like the same way as the MR. The, uh, the mech masters truly get the most out of this versatile little mech, however, empowering them to into full-fledged and heavily armed combats and explorers. So it's like, that would be really cool. Yeah. I can just envisage now the Met Masters in some form of crater and he's just looking back, talking to the scouts and they're just like, acknowledging him in some kind of binary way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> That's really cool. Like, they can name it too. <laughs> you know, That would be really cool. Like yeah. envisage that in your head. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's down in a crater, the shots going off around him. It's just carnage everywhere and he just casually looks up after programming the other mech 
and then tells you the next what to do. Yep. It's kind of like a little one-man army. It's almost like an R2-D2, right? So it's like you can have R2 with you fighting on the battlefield. No one just calls R2-D2. Exactly. But it's like R2-D2. It's, it's like, and like, say it was, yeah. it was like. I, I saw that defensiveness in your whatever that was. R2 like that. <laughs> okay, getting back on track here. The Champions of Amari War Pack. So the Champions of Amari War Pack starts with General Tarkon. So right there, this is General Tarkon. This okay. guy. Take a look at his uh, model there, okay? Ooh, okay. General Alagas Tarkon <laughs> would rather <laughs> chop off his own head than don the crown of the king. He doesn't want to be king, even though you think he would be, because he kind of looks like a king. He? Though it was King Harabith's decree that Tarkon take the entire Amari military to aid the vanguard at Ankar, Tarkon still blames himself for not being there when his king needed him most, so he's super guilty. Right? That's why he doesn't want to be king. He's guilty. Now that the roll, if not the crown, falls to him, he must find a way to lead his people out of the darkness that threatens to consume them. He believes that will only happen by learning the truth, and all answers wait on Ankar. So, so he's, yeah. he's the king that doesn't want to be king. Correct. So he's he is kind of the king? The unofficial but leader. But he doesn't want to be king. He's like, I'm not the king. I'm not the king. Not until I find out everything that happened here in Ankar. That's what he is, okay? Yeah, that uh, slaughtering that happened on Ankar was nuts. I do like that axe. That axe looks pretty. It looks like he means business. Oh, yeah, he definitely means yeah. business. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's a massive axe. Super fun, right? I mean, he, he does stand out as a very, very definitive leader of the Amari so far from what I've seen. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Royal Guard. So these are of the, the Amari, Amari Royal Guard. Oh, yeah, look at that, look at the he's double. On, he's on one leg. See the double hammer on that guy? Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know you're cool when you have two, when you have two hammers. Yeah. 100%. This guy has two hammers and he's like barreling towards you. That's super cool too. He's like running towards you. Like again, like some of the Gorkonk units, I wouldn't like to be in the way of that. Yeah. Uh, so, they're okay. the Amari Royal Guard, okay? So this is what they're all about. The Royal Guard have defended their king against threats from beyond the stars and from within their liege's own halls. Okay. Mm. The Founders' teachings say that the first king was born of the first family, only son of the Founder himself. When his father was slain by an angry god, it was the first king who took arms against the god that expelled them from Parvak. Parvak is another planet. Okay, okay, yeah. so we're kind of building up this uh, this galaxy. This galaxy. Of planets. Okay, okay. Of, interesting. Planets. Okay. Those that fought with him became the first royal guardsmen, and they, and those that followed, have served the kings throughout recorded history. So Whoa. Amari always have royal guard, okay? And they're always uh, surrounding a king, so they actually fight alongside General Tarkon, so, but he's actually the, the like, rightful king. Yeah. It's like the royal guards that, like, the castle in London or something like that. Like uh, Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the guards that guard the king. Yeah. 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 That's right. That's Expected. pretty much it. And it's but the exact like same. Amari. But they're Amari. They do look really good. They got, I like the aesthetic of these guys. Um, yes. It's Wait, kind of... They look, like? they look like this. It's kind of an like olden day Viking yes. meets space angry dwarf. Yes. But they're not your typical angry foaming at the mouth dwarf. They seem to have a certain element of reservation about them, but they are just focused and mean. Yeah, I like the character of the hair, the yeah. beards, and the mohawks, the right? Mohawks. Right? And the shape of their mask, like awesome. We all love a good mohawk, don't we? That's right. So check this out though, okay? There are some, the guard captain Sorry, specifically. There's the guard and then there's the guard captain, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Amari guard captain's a little bit different. He's got a unique personality here. So the Amari Is royal guard any, um, was sent with General Tarkon and aid the vanguard on Ankar, leaving their king defenseless to the coming slaughter. So the guilt that every royal guard feels is immeasurable. But the pain is the most potent for the captain. The king's safety was their responsibility. And though they failed in their sacred oaths, they will not fail again. General Tarkon has been declared the new king of the Amari. And whether he wants the title or not, the Royal Guard captains will give their lives for his. Okay, yeah, so, you know, it's um, cool. echoing guilt. Echoing guilt. I suppose okay. it's not easy to live with, that's is it? A, that's a big burden to put on It's a bit of a penance. Keep the king alive. Mm. Yeah, even when the king ordered them away. 
That's right. They should have known better. From them. Hey, I'm in no defense of the Amari. I'm sorry. I agree with every word that you just said. <laughs> That's right. Every word. Every word. Yeah. Any any sort of like thing that would make them feel bad about. And I hope themselves. they feel guilty. They should feel guilty. Yeah. But look at the pacifier. Okay, the IWD pacifier. Now I've seen this model. Sword yes. in the head. Yes. I love it. Okay, so Xerxes did a fantastic job. Amazing job at this. Doing a paint Look job at of this, this. one. Yeah. Okay. This is brilliant. That. Look at that. Look at that, right? It's just it's just so casual, like, yeah, 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 I'll just take him down. What's he actually still on? Is he the razor worm, I think? Yeah, he's so. He's got his sword embedded in? No, I'm not too it's sure. Like a, it's like one of those, it's like a big, it's like a big orc dog. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Kind of like a big orc dog. Or it could be a big orc dog, could but. Be. It's just casually just like that's it, massive you know, sword. Huge sword. So this love it. This is what the pass fire is, okay? So while the pilots of the diplomat and ambassadors squabble over kill stats, they all fall silent when an IWD pacifier <laughs> walks by. And why? With all four arms, shoulder-mounted rockets, and two incredibly large swords, the pacifier is an easy answer to whatever needs to die. Unlike the diplomat and the ambassador, the pilots of the pacifier are surgically bound to their mechs. They can't escape it, okay? Each a hero, war herald, or champion of the Amari, cut down but unwilling to give up the fight. Wow. Right, okay. Yes. So I thought they were just like pilots that got in and out. I didn't realize they were bound, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, which makes for a more efficient war machine if you're kind of biologically connected to whatever you're okay. wearing. Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Now. I think we should pacify Ryan. Let's I get him. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so last thing though, take a look at this. Okay. Aquarian oppressors, okay? We're gonna call this the uh, the oppressor. Now that is about that size. It's pretty sweet. Okay. So it's one of the Amari flyers. It's one of the Amari flyers. Yep. A newer addition to the King's March, the Aquarian Oppressor is a repurposed civilian aircraft modified for terrestrial warfare. So on planets, that's where it's fighting, okay? The owners of the Aquarian Industries did not survive the genocide of the Amari system, so their fire suppression aircraft was a perfect solution to General Tarkhan's demand that the Amari have a stronger air force. The Oppressor may look a little clunky at first, but it has a surprising amount of maneuverability and its new weapon options make it a true terror of the skies. So it's a civilian aircraft that's been outfitted for aerial combat. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's not a spacecraft. It's I'm surprised the Amari didn't have that to begin with. Look at the look what they have in their arsenal. It's very advanced. It can be specific, but then also generic to adapt to whatever it gets thrown in their way. Mm -hmm. But they had a civilian aircraft outfitted for aerial combat. And I think maybe perhaps it's because either those sections of the of the military have not been revealed yet, or they have been destroyed, and they have to repurpose stuff. Or they weren't needed at the time. They weren't needed at the time. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Right? Who knows? But, who knows? but, but you know what? Cars destroyed. But you know what? I like the fact that they, you know, they had to outfit a civilian aircraft mm -hmm. in times of need. That's what you got to do. That's what and, you do. But these guys did it with efficiency, no doubt. That's right. Now, moving on to the unyielding war pack, okay? Ooh. Starting with the Incarnate Architect. So Incarnates have powers. Wow. The Architects so represent Ooh. the fourth branch of the Engineers of War, and like the helmet. The helmet as they like are the all Incarnates, it should be no surprise they represent the eye of the Engineer of War's emblem. Fewer than 1% of all Amari are Incarnates, making the architects a tiny fraction of the other branches. The inner workings of the organization is unknown to all, but the top brass of the engineers of war, which gives the architects an allure of mystery to the common soldier, but also another reason for a rising resentment against them. So the architects are like, they're pretty special. When you said they have powers. Yeah. P powers? Yeah, they got magic powers. Okay, so they have yeah. some form of power that's outside of the physical dimensions Correct. we know it oh yeah they can manipulate interesting energy. so the masters of engineer and warfare also rely on what we perceive to be magical powers yeah wow yeah they yeah. really will use anything to their advantage yeah. won't they why else would he have a staff like this well, why else would he have a um a cube like that some sort of magical artifact yeah. that could channel potential psychic power that's right Okay, that's the architect. But I suppose, Roy, you know, when you're on the edge of extinction, you're going to take what you're given, aren't you? Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to try your best, whatever you do, knowing that you've got the gore cog on your doorstep, constantly. 
All right, now for the Forge Strike War Captain. So there's a number of different War Captains. So the squad leaders of the Forge Strike Division, War Captains, are accomplished combatants and passionate leaders, often equipped with a melee weapon, usually a focused light sword or Forge Strike hammer. These brothers and sisters of arms lead the rest of the Forge Strike champions on specialized missions, including small skirmishes, incursions, and the occasional black op. When needed, they have not shied away from full-scale war, such as coming to the aid of the vanguard on Andra. Black Ops units, eh? Yeah, those are the captains. I do like the shields. The shields are really yeah, cool. The I like the... Like, are cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the kind of... What's that? Wings at the side? Yeah. I do like that. It's not just your conventional shield. That's right. Yeah, it's not like... The, yeah. like it's quite decorative. Captain. The Amari are quite decorative, aren't they? Yes, they Their are. Their armor is very... Regal. regal. Yeah. Great word, I love it. Yeah. They are very regal. Um, but also it looks efficient, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not too clunky and too platey, nope. but they actually look like they could run a short distance. Absolutely. With their tiny little legs. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So now we're going to look for, right here, this is a drone pilot, okay, and these are drones. Ah, makes sense, these, okay. these guys. Yeah, let's take a look at the drone and the drone pilot, okay? So the drone pilot. Many a great mech master began their career as a simple drone pilot, providing invaluable intel and combat support in service of the Amari military. Drone pilots often command multiple IWD light drones, such as wasps and hornets, which are these right here, using them to provide cover fire to Amari infantry or to harass enemy lines. Each drone packs a surprising amount of firepower in a relatively small frame, allowing pilots to do an impressive amount of work from the relative safety of the back line. So just like, just imagine at the back, it's like, okay, da -da 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 -da, flying around, wasps, Yeah, hornets. I can imagine you, 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 yeah, your drone pilot, um, your mech warrior, the, like all sat in one place. Yep. Like this little command group. Yes. All talking, saying, right, where are your drones? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. You know, while they've got the infantry in front of them, they've got the other, elements of the Amari coming in from the side. That's it's right. quite a, quite an efficient mm -hmm. fighting force, actually. Oh, yeah. I don't like saying this. <laughs> the more you learn I'm about I'm not gonna them. say it. The more you learn about them, the more you like no, them, yeah? And that's that's genuine as well. Like, yeah, it's so I, cool. I came into this and I was very much like you, Ryan. I was very much <laughs> Amari. But then the more I've actually learned, because yeah. they're actually, yeah, I can relate to their yes. style of combat, and right. I like that. Yeah, there's order it's, behind it. Yeah, there's, there's it's good. There's militarized, there's tactics, there's mm -hmm. logic. I, yeah. I now like it better than... I, I I'm going to go, actually. I'm going to turn the mic off and go. I'm already... <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually really do. It's, it's the mechs, the pilots. Mm -hmm. I like the whole... Dr which, again, leads into the fact that each army, from what I can tell, has got multiple ways to play. Multiple ways of playing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so there's more drones to come there's out. There's more drones to come out. Yeah, that's essentially and what And all their functions. It'd be, really, it'd be really cool okay. to see like a surveillance drone. Okay. So, I, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud here. How cool would it be before you start a battle and however the point system works, because I actually don't know yet, that a um, yeah. one of the drone pilots could pay for a surveillance drone mm -hmm. and that has some sort of impact before you start the game. I don't know. I don't know, what do you think? I think it'd be cool. Yeah. You know, again, I love the lore when it ties in and relates to what you game do play. on the tabletop. That's yeah. right, and that's why learning lore is important yeah. because then they actually function as they would in the story. Yeah, yeah. and that is yeah. the whole point of immersing yourself into yeah. a lore-driven game. I love learning game. lore. Mm -hmm. Like, lore learning is fun. It is fun. Because it's awesome. Learn... Well, put it this the way, right? The lore and the models have now say it swung me towards potentially collecting an amari after of course i've mastered the gorkok after we have mastered the gorkok that's right now the last thing okay oh here we go so the ambassador is the last unit that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. i mean we did but we didn't know the lore. briefly i want to yeah one of the law behind this oh, okay. hammer wielding heap of metal that's right so it is said that when the IWD revealed the ambassador to General Tarkon, it was the first time he had smiled since the aftermath of Ankar. Okay, when he saw this thing, he's like, okay. We'll soon change that. cause for smile. Standing taller than any other mech in the EOW, the ambassador is capable of inflicting an incredible amount of destruction upon the Amari's enemies. It was designed and built as an answer to the Gorkog Razor Worm. <laughs> 
an escalation in R&D design that replaced the previous era when the division aimed to create smaller, more agile Maxim vehicles. So yeah, these two need to meet on the battlefield and we'll see what happens. You gotta have a battle, it's just you bring that and I bring that. I mean, I know what my money's on. I mean, I know what win? my money's on too. Who would win? You know what's awesome? We can actually do that soon. We can do that soon. Yeah. Yes. Because the core rules are made. Oh, they're in there. Oh, they're in there. Oh, they're upstairs. They're somewhere. Yeah. Well, uh, they're somewhere. They're but somewhere, and, and we're gonna do it because it's just fun. See, it's fun. I, I made the mistake with these models, just glancing at them. I did not realize this. This the ambassador, sorry, had like two sets of cannons on the back. When I saw it on the table, I was like, oh, he's got a hammer, close combat orientated, and I've just seen he's got a wrist cannon as well. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of firepower. He has rockets on the back. He yeah. has a huge hammer. He's got rockets actually in his torso as well. Yeah. He has multiple guns. This thing's like a mobile gun platform with the hammer that is huge and just... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to take a swing from that. I, yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. But it, you wouldn't survive a swing from that. I don't think much would, but that's the beauty of majority of the models. That's right. You know, even going back to some of the Gorkov models, which I love, once you get into the model, you look at it intricately and you're like, I never realized I had that. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's right. Hidden little surprises. So, recap on the Amari. What do you think? Uh, it's, they're great. Um, they're great. Did that change, does this video change your like, opinion? Yeah. Like, they're, learning the lore actually makes you like it yeah. better? Yeah, the drone controllers. I bet that's would, gonna do the same thing for the veil touch. Like the because uh, oh, yeah. some people they're like ah, yeah. but once they learn the lore, it's like yes. I I I, yeah. I I agree with what Ryan's saying. Once you learn, I don't even know the full lore of the Gorkai, and I think that's gonna make me even love, love them more. Probably. Probably, mate. <laughs> yes. Were you, what were you saying? Yes. So the looking at the Amori models mm -hmm. and learning about the drone pilots um, and the mech masters and the Royal Guard. Yes. Knowing the law behind them now, what they do, how they function within their army, I like it. It appeals to me. Yeah. I've changed my mind. Me too. I've sold myself out. Sorry, guys. I, I, I'm, I'm sold. Like, again, but again, there's something that I can relate to there, and hopefully many people can in the community. I mean, um, I am. Um... Mm. I, Definitely. I like the Amari. I, 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 I they're good. <laughs> Um, but like, it's not like I'm just gonna go out of my way to like get an army of them. I'm gonna do core cause. Good. Right, but before that went from they are no good to they're to good. They're good yeah. So they're, they're now good. They're not number one. Number one's Gorkog for you, right? <laughs> obviously. But they're good because they're cool. Oh, no, I'm Max. Yeah. Okay, and drones. So, in like closing, yep. links in description. Links everywhere. November 7th is the launch date for the tabletop game yeah. of Ravage Star. Get in, follow before we launch. Yes. Get a miniature for free. Get more free minis during the campaign. And you can okay? be a drone pilot too. You can be a drone pilot, all this stuff. Leave your comments, stay tuned. Enjoy, engage on the excitement. Leave your ideas. We read every single comment on this, okay? We will see it. So if you have any ideas for scenarios, for units, for special rules, whatever it might be, leave it Please. down below. Thank you very much everyone for tuning in. Stay tuned for more Ravage Star content. Mini Wargamer Dave here, Ryan, and Gaz. Happy Wargaming.